yeehaw! Yeehaw, everybody! Remember, these $100 bills are just waiting for you to come and get them. You think I was kidding? Four for four today. I would have gave you 100 bucks if any of my trades didn't work today. So what did we do today? I don't know, IQ breaking out. How about some Alibaba breaking out? How about some Square breaking out? How about some Twitter breaking out? How about some earnings reversals on A&F winner? So again, show up. I'm handing out money. Woo! So next week I'm going to be interviewing a bunch of ladies. Considering this is a male-dominated business, you're not going to see my face too much. We'll have her do a video once a week. Hopefully we could find somebody as gorgeous and as amazing as day trading Dina going forward. If not, we'll have some fun anyway. Hopefully, you know, some of these models that I'm friends with have articulation skills. A lot of times these are just pretty faces and they don't have the articulation skills to get the point across. And again, as much as it's nice to look at pretty girls, I want them to be able to say something. So that's where we're headed. I got a studio now that I have access to. Um, but more importantly, I apologize for one thing. I run this whole shebang myself, all right? I got one guy that he's pretty good at talking about the VWAP charts, and he's in the room while I'm out there making phone calls. So let me explain to what happens. Here's the process. I sit in the room between 9.30 and about 12, and I go strong. I go hard. I don't get up. I drink coffee. I don't eat. I sit there and I find winners for you like Yext, Y-E-X-T, which was still in. This is our new swing trade. There's my present to you. Brand new stock, just broke 16. We're in at 16 and 16.50, looking for 17.50, then looking for 20. Um, right now, everything is working. Most of the time, my day trades become swing trades, become investments. And um, Okay, but most of my trades, um, day trades become swing trades, become investments. What I'm trying to enforce upon people right now is don't let a day trading mistake ruin your focus. For instance, if you're the guy that finally bought Alibaba today at 205 and it pulled in a dollar and you lost money on it, doesn't mean the stock's still not going to 250. But day trading will ruin your good idea because you'll watch a stock that you love having an awful day. Maybe you've, you're day trading it and you're getting smoked on it. What happens is you generally lose focus that that stock's still probably good at just having a down day, like Square. Remember the numbers came out? Nobody wanted that stock. Breaking through 47.50, 46, 45, it was a great short. And the next day, what happened? The buyers showed up and the stock's at all-time highs now. So buying on dips is still working. But if you were trading SQ that day, trying to pick a bottom for an hour or two, you probably got smoked. And maybe you lost your focus that Square's probably going to $75 or $100 because you got all pissed off that day. Don't let day trading ruin your life. That's why a lot of my videos were called Day Trading Ruin My Life. I had a portfolio once, was the QQQ, Costco, Adobe, and Tesla. Those were my four stocks that I owned. And I remember there was something with Tesla and the blah, 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 around when it was 85 bucks, and it was down 10 points one day. I was like, that's it, I'm done with this stock. And I lost my focus thinking that they could go to 250. I never bought it back. Sure, it was a great trade from 40 bucks to 80. I made 100% of my money, but then it went to 380. And then, of course, Adobe. There was a time where I owned Adobe, right? And there was some news that came out that Microsoft's going to cut off Flash or Steve Jobs didn't want to do anything with Flash anymore. Everybody was like, oh my God, Adobe, it's over. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should sell it right here. The stock's up 150 points since I sold it. And of course, then there's Costco, which I just was in from like 35 and it went to 70. I figured that was a good time to sell it. And now it's up another 120 points. And I'm sure it was a reason that I sold it that day because it was probably having a bad day. And I was like, oh, let me sell the Costco. And that, that's what happens. But right now, there's so many good things to swing, own, day trade. Everything's working right now because the market's going sideways in a really nice channel. You're able to buy the dips, sell the rips, and over and over again. Like Square, even though it's, sorry, even though it just hit 60, this thing could be a nice short 
next week. If it gaps up and rolls over, maybe some profit taking ensues and Square is going to be a great short. And we'll be talking about how it's a great short. What a great short that SQ was. Doesn't mean it's still not going to 75 over the next seven or eight months. Alibaba opens up at 205.50 on Monday, reverses and goes down, breaks the BWAP. We'll be talking about how we shorted Alibaba for the day. Doesn't mean the stock's still not going to 250. IQ, that stock, we've probably done equally as good shorting it as we've done buying it because it moves. And we timed it right a couple of days ago where we had a really great short on IQ and now it's at all time high. So we own it in one account and we short it in the other account. So anyway, let me go back to my apology. I can't call everybody. I'm, most of the time I'm trading for three or four hours of the day helping the people that have already signed up, the members, and then I get on the phone. And I get on the phone and this is probably I'm talking to you. You keep me on the phone for 45 minutes asking me questions about my history, even though you should know because you were in the room back four or five years ago. Because I'm calling everybody. I'm calling people from 2008 just to figure out what went wrong. I'm still in the business. What went wrong and why did you leave my side? If you would have stuck around, you'd be prosperous right now. I want to know what happened. What could I do to help you now? Some people don't want to hear about it. Some people don't care. Some people got blown up in the last crash. Some people started shorting the market, blow themselves up on the way back up. Everybody's got a crazy story, but I'm out to find out what that story was and how I could help. So to the guy that I spoke to yesterday, you know who you are. 45 minutes you keep me on the phone. You're asking me questions. We're reminiscing about the days of suck my NASDAQ. Yeah, I get it. We're talking about all those winners that I gave you and you, and you made some money, but then you lost it all because of the crash. And then you tell me how you're definitely looking to get back in. You've saved, you've saved that $25,000, $30,000 now that you could have a, a retail account instead of a profit account. Where are you? 45 minutes we're talking yesterday. Definitely showing up tomorrow, Kenny. I'll be there. I can't wait to see some of these option plays that you're talking about. Where are you? Where are you? So that's 45 minutes of my life I can't back, get back now. I'm not calling you back. Now if you show up, great. If you never show up, I'll just have to live with that confusion. 45 minutes you keep me on the phone. We're talking VWAP, reversals, sentiment, where the market is, politics, risk management. Definitely see you tomorrow. Nowhere to be seen today. It's very heartbreaking for me when that happens. Heartbreaking because I can't get that 45 minutes back of my time and I still feel like something I did wrong. What did I say in that conversation that you woke up this morning and said, you know, fuck Kenny. That all sounded great. I know he's doing all right, but you know what? Screw it. I want to know why. I want to know why. I know it's hard. I'm not going to be able to please everybody, right? But my God, Please don't be the guy that shows up to the chat room one day on a Thursday at 2 o'clock when we're not even talking about trading and make your decision. Spend three or four weeks with me, you'll get a really good idea of what we do within three or four weeks and then make your decision whether or not you want to stay. And I'll give you a hundred bucks. I'll give you a hundred bucks. If I don't find you some winning trades over any 22 you know, I say $22, 20, it's only usually 22 or 23 days per every month, whatever, let's say, call it 20 days, five days a week, so it's not 30 days. If I can't find you some winning trades and show you how these setups work, I'll give you $100. So there you go. I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm not even saying that I'm going to make you any money. I will guarantee that I could show you how to do it. Take the challenge. Unlike the Tim Sykes challenge where the challenge is give me $5,000 and I'll try to show you what I do. That's the challenge. I was like, Tim, how about you give me $5,000 and then show me what you do because apparently you're on vacation all the time handing out money and you know, you're doing all these fantastic things. Why don't you give me the money and then I'll challenge myself. I love it, the Tim Sykes Challenge. Apparently, I'm still on one of these lists. They call me every six months. Hey, Kenny, are you ready to take the Tim Sykes Challenge? I'm like, yeah, what do I have to do? Just send us $5,000 and we'll show you how to trade. Not 
doesn't really sound like a challenge. It sounds like I'm paying you $5,000 for something I'm not really aware of what is going to happen. But oh shit, how do I sign up? And here I am saying, here's the challenge. All you got to do is show up and then I'll show you how to make money. And then if you make money, then maybe you send me some of it. Now that's a challenge to me because I got to prove myself. Well, just sign up for nothing. I'll, I'll just say the word FinTech, Millennial, VWAP, Reversal 500 times, and I'll say thanks for playing. I'll keep your 500 bucks because that's basically every class you ever take at a day trading expo. So my problem right now is I can't get through to a lot of people. I will. I'm going to spend June hardcore. I'm calling every single one of you guys, all right? So give me some time. I'll get to you because I want to talk to each and every one of you so I get to know what your fears are, because it's the fear that prevents you from making money. It's not my setups. My setups work. My trades work. It's the fear. And I think part of the fear is something that's working this well, you think that when you do it, now it's not going to work, right? I know. That's the fear. Oh, it's all working out so good, but I'll be just like that guy, Corey. But you know what? If Corey would have stuck around, since we got hammered in the mark and the QD and the DSW and the, all those other shitty stocks, we got the IQ, the Alibaba, the Square, the I, the AAOI, the IQ, the Sale, the VRX, the X, the Twitter, the AMD, and the Rig. So, yeah, you might have a bad three or four weeks, but then if you keep following the patterns and be disciplined, next thing you know, you have the best three months of your life. All right, have a good weekend, and uh, hopefully I'll see you. And if you want to talk to me on the phone, look, I don't want to waste your time, obviously, but please don't waste my time. 45 minutes on the phone, at least show up the next day. Come on. Come on, guy. But Italy. Ugh.